Welcome back to the exchange. Muni bond demand is actually heating up. Inflows into Muni mutual funds were $11 billion through last week, according to Nuveen, with more than half going into high yield bond funds specifically. And between high yield and more high grade, our next guest says there's plenty of opportunity out there. Joining me with his key sectors is Dan Close. He's head of municipals at Nuveen. It's great to have you here. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Colin. Can we take a step back and paint, sure. paint the picture for Muni's? We, they suffered as the Fed began jacking rates up and everything just kind of had to get reset in terms in terms of um, you know, yields that could entice investors. Where are we now? Yeah, muties have had a difficult year so far this year, and it's, it's primarily two factors. One is rates. Uh, backup of 50 basis points in the 10-year Treasury has impacted muties. It's impacted all of fixed income, so muties has certainly been affected. But we've also had something very unique to muties. Um, so far, we've had a lot of issuance this year, 40% uh, higher than we were May of last year. Wow. Uh, we've had two back-to-back -back months of more than $40 billion in April and May. And so the market has had some trouble really digesting all the supply that we've seen. It's just issuers trying to get in front of the election, go in and issue. Uh, back in 2016, there was a number of issuers that, that waited, waited, and didn't like the outcome. And mm. now we're talking to underwriters, to bankers, to issuers. And they're trying to get in front of it. So I, I think it sets us up nicely for the second half of the year, but it's been a little bit tougher so far. That's really interesting. Put that in context. So $40 billion a month, would that be very high historically or only by recent standards? No, uh, very high uh, by both recent standards and historically. I mean, in a given month, we usually don't see a $40 billion type month. Hmm. Uh, but we are seeing just a confluence of issuance right now. And again, I think that's part of the calendar getting pulled up, issuers trying to avoid any uncertainty with respect to what the issuance might be for the election. So if I want a nine and a quarter percent tax equivalent yeah. yield, what kind of exposure am I am I getting? What are and, and, and where would you kind of point people if they wanted something that wasn't going to going to they wanted to sleep at night. Right, right. So nine and a quarter on a tax equivalent yield is where our high yield fund is right now. So that is going wow. in and buying primarily non-rated paper, certainly still essential service monopolies, but these are more non-rated double B, single B type issuances. Such as? Any, any examples come to mind? Like, like what kinds of, of projects for, or, or, or pieces of infrastructure or whatever? Yeah, all of these are for infrastructure, mm -hmm. but right now in our high yield fund, for instance, we have a lot of what are called dirt deals. Uh, so when you're going in and building a development in Florida, hmm. you're putting in streets, you're putting in potable water, but then you're getting repaid over time by going in and paying an assessment that's peri pursue with property taxes. Is that, is that a risky in, endeavor? I mean, it would seem over time like that would be a pretty good one. But. Yeah, certainly, certainly. You're taking a lot more risk up front, but over time it turns into essentially a local general obligation bond. So there is some more risk up front. But if we're wrong in our analysis, you do have a lot of value to lean. You have an ability to, to have a mortgage. So these types of credits are in the high-yield fund. We have charter schools in the high-yield fund. Really? Uh, different types of credits that are a little bit more non-traditional. And then on more of the high-end, <laughs> high-grade, high whatever, <laughs> on the luxury side, <laughs> um, where would you be looking in that space if you said, okay, maybe I don't need nine and a quarter, but I'd take something over five for a, right. a pretty reliable you know, back, backer? Right. And, and right now, on the entire municipal yield curve, no matter where you are, even for AAA-rated bonds, you're yielding more than 5% on a taxable equivalent yield. And that's why we've seen so many flows come in. But where we're looking right now, uh, more on the high-grade side, water and sewer. Mm -hmm. We're looking at local general obligation bonds that are backed by uh, local property taxes. And, and we've seen a lot of airport debt being issued, too. As we start to see airports go in and go a little bit more away from building just runways and gates. We're seeing more amenities come in for uh, shopping, for retail outlets, for other other things that yeah. uh, that come up, and we're See, seeing that. I don't know why munis get this better. I think this is fascinating. <laughs> I could get. I love connecting all of these dots. And the election thing you mentioned as well, um, Dan. Thanks for your time today, and we'll we'll follow up and see, especially as the election grows near, how that's affecting investors. Thank you so much for having me, Kelly. Yeah, we appreciate it. Dan, close with Nuveen.